What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, well, you've come to the right place. If you're smart, then you won't take what comes out of Ethan Klein's mouth too seriously. I don't know what the guy's deal is, but over the years, he's just gotten more and more unhinged. Ever since he tried to pull a fast one on Keemstar, what with the whole content nuke ordeal, he's only further humiliated himself with all these wacky takes of his. It was only a few months ago where he tried to call out Jake Paul after his match with Tyron Woodley by bringing up a case where someone had accused Jake of sexual assault. Mind you, these allegations had pretty much no evidence or backing. But again, we're talking about an unhinged individual here. It's just like he's inclined to use serious accusations as ammunition against people that he don't like. And the next saga of Ethan Klein being a generally deranged individual, he is now taking shots at Joe Rogan. And let's just say, he ain't hitting any of them. His mental breakdown starts with this tweet. Joe Rogan, who lives on elk meat, egg yolk, and human growth hormone with lungs full of tar, thinks he's healthier than everyone. Okay, well, first of all, elk meat and egg yolk are perfectly normal foods. I'm not sure why he decided to include that in his list of his, but then again, we know he ain't too bright. This MFR is such a bitch that when he got COVID, he threw the kitchen sink at it. If you're so healthy, just ride it out. Out like you say a man should. Uh, so yeah, this is completely unhinged. It's just him bitching and moaning, not really saying much of substance here. Dude has caused so much vaccine hesitancy and misinformation, and he doesn't even have the balls to stand by the shit he preaches. Oh great, pulling out the buzzwords, huh? Saying that Joe Rogan is responsible for, a uh, what, vaccine hesitancy? I think that's incredibly short-sighted. I'd say people are hesitant to get the vaccine because of a lack of transparency and conflicting data from people like the CDC and, you know, the mega corporations. People like them. A lot of people feel as if the government and these no mega corporations are trying to whip them into complacency. They don't trust the government or the mega corporations behind the vaccine, that kind of stuff. But no, obviously, Joe Rogan is the sole cause behind why people are hesitant to get the quote-unquote jab. Jesus. Now he's on a show talking about how fat people should just die of COVID. Alright, well, citation needed. I wouldn't doubt it, you know. I mean, the Joe Rogan experience is a is a wild podcast. But I mean, you know, some clips would be appreciated. Back up your points. Instead of getting vaccinated, he takes Regeneron. Why are you getting angry over Joe's personal decision? Sounds like you need to be a little less nosy, huh? An experimental drug that was developed alongside mRNA vaccines. His logic makes no sense and then credits ivermectin, which does nothing for COVID. Didn't he beat COVID in two days though? I don't know, man. I might have to get me some of that stuff if I ever get myself down with some of that COVID-19. Not to mention whatever's in an alpha brain. Meanwhile, Joe is on a big pharma conspiracy against vaccines. Someone needs to ask him who makes Ivermectin and Regeneron and all the other stuff he took when he had COVID. I really have no idea what Ethan's getting at here, right? Because, like, you can criticize some companies while also praising others, right? It's not mutually exclusive. As you can kind of guess, uh, this is unhinged. It's incoherent and it has nothing of real importance to say when these tweets dropped people began to clown on the guy obviously h3h3 is in pretty poor shape you look at him and well you don't see fit that's for sure when general sentiment began turning on him he immediately went on a coping spree Joe Rogan, a steroid pinata whose gut is so swollen from human growth hormone, lectures people on health. Which is funny because we literally went through a Twitter thread where Mr. Klon went on a rant about health. He shows this picture of Joe Rogan and it's like, okay, Joe's in his like 50s. Of course he's not going to be in his best shape. You're 36 years old. By all means, you're not too far out of your prom, yet I'd be surprised if you don't have a heart attack by age 45. Joe Rogan, who lectures people on health, is pumped full of more hormones and steroids than farm cattle. I believe they call this ad hominem. Fat man bad, strong man good. So, you know, he, he's coping. He's just mostly coping. Then someone else jumps in. Ethan Klein, who has the muscle tone of flan, actually believes he has the same body as Joe Rogan. And he responds, ratio plus baited plus intellectual heavyweight. So basically, he got called out. He got called out by pretty much anyone not in his hive mind fan base. And the only thing he can say is, jokes on them, I was only pretending to be retarded. By the way, he retweeted his own tweet. How sad do you have to be to retweet your own tweet? God damn. Interestingly enough, Joe Rogan has yet to respond to this whole debacle, and frankly, he probably won't. Ain't that sad though? 
You try to start beef with someone and he's completely indifferent to you. I don't even know if Joe Rogan knows Ethan Klein exists, to be honest. So all in all, H3H3 made himself look dumb on the internet and he tried to play it off like he was joking. Can someone tell me why this guy still has an audience? Oh yeah, I remember now. There was a point in time where he was one of the faces of YouTube, so now we have to put up with his meanderings. Jesus. Something that's gotten Twitch in a stir was that Pokimane got banned for watching Avatar The Last Airbender. Like, in full. She was streaming entire episodes to an audience of 250,000 people. Apparently that's the new meta on Twitch. First it was the hot tubs, now it's literally just committing copyright violations. Damn, these guys evolve fast, don't they? Naturally, this violates DMCA, so she got banned for it. Now what I want to know is what in her right mind made her think she could just stream a commercially available media with no repercussions. Don't get me wrong, DMCA and fair use can be a gray area, but I mean, it's pretty black and white here. Don't stream entire episodes of licensed media. Companies ain't gonna stand for it, that's for sure. After all, what's the point of paying to see a season for a show if you could just watch it on your favorite Twitch streamer's stream? So Pokemon confirmed a 48 hour ban, and I will say to her credit, she certainly took the ban pretty well. Very maturely, the Fire Nation attack. Just to be clear, I'm not surprised and I don't think this was unfair. In my opinion, it was inevitable that publishers would take action on me or someone else during this React meta. I think the way she responded was pretty good. So people have actually been sharing this tweet that Hassan made, uh, the worst take I ever done seen. Everything is fair use if the copyright holder doesn't care about pursuing a DMCA claim. Well see, that's the problem, they probably will. Believe it or not, companies don't like it when their intellectual properties are blatantly stolen. So yes, they probably will care. Be smart, don't watch entire movies, Viacom, Disney, or new episodes, and stop snitching. Stop snitching. Dude, Pokimane is one of the biggest streamers on the platform. If she's doing illegal stuff, Twitch is gonna know. Video games are a great example of this. Technically, all the games we play on stream are still subject to copyright laws, but the industry recognizes the influence and benefit of streamers playing their games. This is why it's super rare for a publisher to pursue copyright. Well, there's a difference between a video game and a movie, you realize that, right? A video game is something that you experience, for lack of a better word. Watching it ain't the same as actually playing it, right? So if you watch someone on, say, YouTube play a video game, there's still an incentive to go out and buy it and experience the gameplay for yourself. Now, with movies and TV shows, if you watch them on someone's stream, there's really no incentive to go out and buy it yourself because you've just seen everything it has to offer. Something like that, right? Basically, his son has no idea what he's talking about. What's new? Apparently there was another streamer called Disguised Toast who got into some hot water as well. After streaming Death Note, which, like dude, that's like the dumbest thing you could probably do. Seriously, anime companies are real protective of their copyrights. You think western animation studios are bad? You do not want to mess with the folks in Japan. By the way, this guy got a month's ban. Keep in mind, Pokemon got just 48 hours. I think it highlights a real bias in the Twitch system, but I think that's something we've known for a while now. All I gotta say is, it's so funny seeing Twitch streamers get stamped on for stuff that we YouTubers have been accustomed to for a while. We know that you can't just react to anime or TV shows, we know that that stuff just don't fly. But Twitch streamers are a little more stubborn and it might just be the death of them. In any case, I think the boat is being rocked right now. For a long time now, Twitch streamers have been reacting to copyrighted content, often with little actual input to make it fair use, to the point where a lot of people just say that they're straight up stealing content. Will big companies put their foot down on the Twitch streamers? Will Twitch finally have to adapt and implement new rules so that they can prevent lawsuits regarding DMCA? Who knows? I'm tired and I want to go to bed. So yeah, that's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.